for the first time I saw a piece of Tony's. I saw this thing hanging on the wall and I was immediately drawn to it like a, a moth towards a flame. It was just this kind of animal attraction to the unknown. Well, I've been working so long with tin and brads and cutting and nailing and assembling. I don't know whether to be proud or embarrassed. Like around 1963, it became my major way of working. They were tearing down an old market. And as they tore it down, there were many layers of tin advertising signs with new ones on top and very rusted ones as you peeled it back. And so I just started finally cutting up those tin signs and rearranging them and and I started nailing them. And all the hammering was sort of like uh, the nails are like brush strokes. They record the history of the action and the energy. When I'm working in the studio, I actually don't worry about anything. I don't worry about uh, politics or money or even mortality. I'm just uh, caught up in the struggle, which uh, I really enjoy. I find that making art is just the pleasure of making it. One thing I love about Tony is that there's never that kind of um, self-indulgent um, pathos. It's work made by a grown-up or made by an adult, or someone who's like, um, really knows what they're about and that their work isn't just about their self. Their work is about something bigger that, that humans share. I think as an artist, he's someone who, who really delights in pleasure and wants to share that and actually thinks that then meaning comes out of those pleasures. Anything you do that's repetitive, just the pleasure of making shapes, it tends to move you into this other state. And then just magical things happen through process. Tony Berlant's living proof that form matters. And um, what's actually more important than having a message to deliver in the work is to create an experience for viewers in the work. Well, the houses came from uh, finding a little birdhouse at a swap meet and taking the little birdhouse and having it around for a while and then covering it with tin. It fit very well in this line between sculpture and painting that you'd, you couldn't see all the planes at once. They were all found tin at first, just hand nailed. Now they involve photography in places. They've evolved over time. They're beautifully complicated. It didn't take any effort to get to know Warhol. So I used that Warhol photograph of me as a, uh, a touchstone to make a picture of myself at that time, and also as a, an homage and a remembrance of uh, Warhol. I've always been a compulsive collector, and as a collector, it's always the quest to find something that I'm absolutely thrilled by that no one else wants. I think that that's kind of how he looks at his job as an artist, that he's like picking up the stuff around him, moving it around, cutting it up, hammering it back together to make his world more interesting. There's that sense of excitement that something special is going to happen. I'd like to find at this point that there's so much of my work out in the world and when I see them and they come back, they look better usually than I remember them. They do carry the mysterious uh, scent of the time they were made in. Work is never finished. That's because every time you make something, then it, there's always a couple of avenues not taken. The work is serial. Each painting leads to another painting. I think of Tony is just one of the most richly inventive artists working of, of any generation.
Let's see if I can come up with one more question. Come up with the meaning of life one and then we can, <laughs> we can move um, on. <laughs>